Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into optional class which is part of the functional programming chapter of the book. We will look into the use case in which optional class can be used and we will also look into few methods which are provided in the class. Let's say you want to calculate the average of the exam scores. Say you have given the exam two times. First time you received 60 marks and the second attempt you received 80 marks. And if the API is called after you have given the second exam, the response to your API will return is 70, which is 60 plus 80 divided by 2. Now, in the scenario when the API is called even before you have given the first exam, at that point of time, your API will either return 0 or it could return null depending on the implementation. So, in these kind of scenarios where you are not able to calculate the value, which means that you do not have enough information to calculate the value, is where we use optional. Think of optional type as a container, as a box. When we do not have a value, in that instance, your API should return an empty optional so that the caller knows that you do not have enough information to calculate the value in our case which is average of the score but when you do have the value you calculate the value put it in a container and then return the optional so in our case we would return an optional with the value of 70 after the second exam in short an empty optional will be returned from the api when you do not have enough information to calculate the value and that is the common use case of optional. Let's head into IntelliJ and let's see how to create get and set values of an optional. First let's look into the declaration. So optional is a generic class which means that whenever we declare a variable we need to provide what type of value will be stored in the optional class. Let's have a quick look at the code of the optional class. So as you see Optional is a very simple Java class which is provided us in the Java library. The value which is one of the instance variable of optional is where the value that we store in that container is stored. And optional does provide us various utility methods that can be used and we will look at some of these in this video. So in here I'm creating an optional which will store the value of Java. I have used a static method called off and this is how you create an optional with a value. To get the value that is stored in the container we will use the get method and for our example I'm just going to simply print the value but you can store in the variable and do whatever you wish to do with it. Now I will save and run the program. So as you would expect it's printing the value that is stored in the optional container. In our case that is Java. Now let's say what happens if I simply print name rather than name.get and save and run the program. So the output we get is optional and in the square brackets we have the value as Java. So the reason we get this output is if we look into the code of optional and scroll down to the toString method. So toString method is the method that is called whenever a variable is passed into println of system.out. So as you see in the implementation, so we are checking whether the value is present. If the value is present, then we print that optional keyword with the square bracket and within the square bracket, we print the value. And if the value is not present, then we simply print optional.empty to signify that there is no value present in the container. Now let's see what will happen if I try to create an optional with a null. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm trying to store a null into the container. Let me save and run the program. So in this case we will get null pointer exception. Essentially what happened was we passed in null and then optional is trying to save the null value in itself but then it hit a null pointer exception because we didn't pass any value. Now there could be scenarios where 
let's say you're getting a value from a caller like in a, in a method and you're trying to create the optional of that now since you are not controlling who is calling your method that caller can pass in null and if you wish to create optional value of what whatever is passed into you could either do a if else check making sure that the value passed in is not null before calling the off method or there is a more convenient way to do similar thing which is to call off nullable so off nullable will essentially see whether a value is being passed into it if it is then an optional of that value is created if the value that's being passed in is null then it simply creates an empty optional object now let me print the optional object when i'm creating it with the off nullable method passing a null and note that i'm not printing the value which is stored in the optional i'm simply printing the optional which is the i'm trying to print the container and i will save and run the program in here the output is optional dot empty and the reason is that the to string now checks whether the value is empty or not and it simply prints optional dot empty when the value is empty so far we have seen how to create an optional with a value that is provided to us and we don't want to do a null checks to create an empty optional say if you want to create an empty optional yourself so the way to do that is we use the empty static method that is available on the optional class so i'm going to create an optional variable called empty and i will use optional dot empty so now i have created a empty container myself now what do you think will happen if i call a get on empty optional before running the program let me change that null back to java and also call name dot get method because we want to print the value rather than the optional and also let me print out the output of empty dot get let's see what happens so i'll save and run the program so in the first case the program printed java so it was able to get a value and print that string in the second case it throws an exception called no such element exception and it says no value present so that means that whenever we would want to get a value from the optional we should always check whether the value is present or not there are multiple ways how we could do that and the quickest way is to use a if block with is present and wrap our getting part around that so is present will return true if the value is present and it will return false if the value is not present and we are only getting the value if it is present i will save and run the program and now in this case we never execute the empty dot get because the code flow wouldn't go there due to the if condition that we added so there is a better way to do that but at the least we should use the if condition whenever we are trying to get the value and we expect a value back i will comment out the code that we don't need uh, anymore so the next method we will be looking at is if present so let's have a quick look at the signature so if present needs a consumer as you might already be aware if not please watch the videos a consumer is a functional interface that takes a value in but doesn't return anything back let me first write the implementation and then we will dig into more so in this case we are calling if present on an optional so the behavior will be that if the value is present in the optional in the container then that consumer will be called if the value is not present then the consumer will be not called so essentially it's very similar to writing the if block but it's in a single line and we are using lambdas and the lambda implementation that we have written is that it's taking the whatever the value is in the container and we are simply printing it out so what i'm going to do is instead of using the lambdas i'm going to convert into the method reference way because that is more cleaner and readable if you don't know what method reference are please watch the video that i have already created to better understand this program i'm also going to call if present 
on the optional that has a value to see the difference. And now I will save and run the program. Now, if you observe the output, the print statement that we have written on line number 19 never got executed. And the reason is because the empty optional that we created doesn't have a value. So system.out.println never got executed. But in line number 20, since the name optional has a value of Java, so that Java word is passed into system.out.println and it is printed. The next method we are going to look into is or else. So let me write the statement and then I will explain more. So this statement is evaluated as following. If there is a value present in the optional, then that value is returned back. If that optional is empty, then the value that we provided in the or else argument is returned. So let me write the same expression with empty optional as well to see the differences. And I will wrap both the statements in system.out.println so that we can see the output. And now I will save and run the program. See, in the first case, because the value Java is present, so Java is returned, which we printed. And in the second case, the empty optional doesn't have a value. So it returns default and we are printing default. The next method that we are looking into is or else get. Let's see the signature of or else get. As you see, it's taking a supplier. And just as a refresher, supplier is a lambda that doesn't take anything as input, but it returns or it supplies a value back. The main difference between or else and or else get is the way it is implemented. And in the case of or else, if the value is null, then whatever we pass in is returned as is. But in the case of or else get, we provide a supplier and if the value is null, then the method called supplier.get, which will actually execute the lambda and then return the value of that executed lambda. And I'm going to call or else get on empty optional as well. And now I will save and run the program. So as you would expect, the output isn't different to our previous or else implementation. The only difference is how optional handled the arguments that we provided. The next method we will look into is or else throw. So in this case, if a value is present in the optional, then that value is returned back. If the value is not present, then we throw an exception back. And let's see what that exception is. Now I'll save and run the program. So in the second case, when the optional was empty, so we throw a no such element exception and it says no value present. So it's exactly same behavior if we would have called empty.get. However, this is more readable. Say you are expecting or you are handling the no such element exception in the caller, then you want to explicitly call this method so that the code is more readable rather than empty.get. The or else throw also have a overloaded method and in the overloaded version we could pass a supplier so instead of throwing no such element exception we could pass our application specific exception and that exception will be thrown instead of the default no such element exception in my case since i don't have a custom exception i'm going to simply pass the supplier of runtime exception and the behavior will be again same if the value is present in the optional, then that value is returned. If it is not present, if the optional is empty, then we will throw that exception that we are providing here. So I will also use the or else throw on our empty optional. And in this case, also I'm using the method reference way. Again, it's exactly same as lambda that I have written the line above. It's just a bit more readable and concise. And I'll also pass in the output of these into print ln method and now save and run the program and in the output on line number 31 since java is present in the optional we print java and in line number 32 the optional is empty and that's why we are returning the runtime exception it's the exception that we asked optional to throw when the value is not present 
Now let's jump back to the slides. So optional was only added in Java 8 version. So previously programmers used to use null instead of optional to convey the similar behavior. However, using null had a couple of shortcomings and which are that there was no clear way to express that null is a special value. So caller calling the API couldn't tell whether the null is being returned because data is not present to calculate the value or is there some kind of bug in the code and we are getting null back. But when passing optional, it's very obvious that the caller doesn't have enough information to calculate the value. So it only returned the empty optional back. The second benefit that we get by optional is that we can use the functional programming style like we have used in if present, we pass in a lambda rather than using if else blocks. So we reduce the number of lines. And third benefit is that we can chain the optional calls. We will look into what chaining is when we discuss streams, which will be in the later videos. So optional can be chained, but we couldn't chain now. That is all I wanted to discuss in this video. If you like the video, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified for my new uploads. Until next time, bye-bye.